Hello and welcome to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today on another Macro Bytes video. So today I want to talk about Canon's 100mm macro lens and the MPE 65mm macro lens 5 times magnification. Which one of these two lenses is right for your photography? Let's find out. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons of the 65mm to start with. And one of the first things you'll notice about this is compare it to the 100mm and it is a little bit smaller. Now, obviously when you get it fully extended, it then becomes a lot larger than the 100mm macro in comparison. So pro when it's when it's smaller, it's more portable. When it's extended, it can, can be a con. It's no heavier or it's, it's probably about the same weight as the 100mm macro, but when it's extended, the weight obviously will distribute through the whole lens. And if you've got it on a body, this could become front heavy, but it's got its own base. So you can actually attach that to the tripod, which makes it a lot more workable. So let's talk about the 65 mils versatility. Now it's not a very versatile lens in the sense of it can only be used for macro. Now that's okay if you're into macro photography, then this is a great lens and it is more versatile than the 100 mil in that respect because it does all the way up to five times magnification. And when used properly, this lens produces excellent image quality and I'll pop some images up on the screen of the photos I've taken with it. So this lens does have a 100 mil working distance at one times magnification. And then as you go through the magnifications, it gets shorter and shorter right down to 41 mil for the five times magnification. So at five times magnification, to get consistently good images, you will need a tripod. I would say a definite con for this is it is manual focus only. There is no autofocus on it. However, when I shoot macro, I generally shoot manual focus anyway. Occasionally autofocus, but nine times out of 10, it will be manual focus anyway. So it's not really a con for me. One of the other cons to this is the depth of field is super shallow. Now we're talking so thin that it's almost impossible to get handheld. You can get some really nice images with it, but I think you would need to stack the images to get the best out of this lens. Another con to this lens is the end, as you can see, is such a small opening. When you're trying to shoot an insect, that becomes very difficult to actually find the target in the first place. It's got such a narrow area of a field of view that it can be quite difficult to find the insect that you're looking for. So that could be a little bit of a con. Once you get used to it, it's not too, too bad. There are techniques you can use to actually overcome that. But uh, generally, I would say that was a con. So another con to this lens, when you're shooting five times magnification, you really do need a tripod and a flash to get the best out of this lens. So your equipment that you carry around starts to grow. So price-wise, they do come in around the same sort of price, but I have seen these secondhand for about £500 and these secondhand for about £800. So these ones might be a little bit dearer when you're purchasing secondhand. So let's talk pros to the 65mm. Now the biggest and most obvious selling point to this is the 65mm does do five times magnification. So that is what you're gonna be purchasing this for predominantly, the fact that it does get a lot closer to your subject. So another pro to this is that it is compact compared to the 100mm and it does leave a little bit extra space in your bag, maybe for a battery, nothing more than that, but it is more compact. So you could probably take a smaller size bag than needed with the 100mm. So another pro is that it does have an aluminum, well, or a metal body it is very robust and very sturdy. The build quality is second to none. And another pro for this is the sharpness of the images. It does take fantastically sharp images. So all in all, this is a great lens. It's a five times magnification, which is gonna be the main selling point and you can get really creative with that. On top of that, very compact, average price range, and it's a very robust lens. So overall, I would say that 65 mil macro was better suited for people that are a bit more advanced in photography and are dedicated to macro photography or creative people. So it's, it's very hard to use. It's, it does need a tripod, it does need flash, and to get the consistently good images. And if you're just starting out photography, you're not gonna be able to use it for anything else. So if you get bored in macro, this lens is gonna be sat on your shelf, gathering dust. Whereas if you're a creative person, this is gonna be very useful at home. You can stick it on a tripod at home, set it up in a little studio, or set it up on your desk, or in your office, wherever, and you can just have this and play about with all the infinite things that you can get in macro, like the photo I showed earlier with the sugar crystals. So let's jump on to the 100 mil. Now the 100 millimeter lens is a very versatile lens. Not only is it good for macro, it's good for portrait photography and it has an infinite focusing point. So with the 65 mil, you're very limited. You've only got the macro range to play with, whereas this can be used in all situations. 
Obviously it is a fixed focal length of 100 mil, so that's the only downside to that, but it's very versatile in the sense that you can take a lot more variety of shots with it. So another pro for the 100 mil macro is it is image stabilized, making those handheld shots a little easier to get. So another pro to this is the autofocus. It is fast and accurate on this, whereas the 65 mil has no autofocus, this does have it. So if you're starting out in macro photography and you need that extra help with the autofocus, this is the lens to choose. And it goes without saying, being an L lens, that this is the superior of the lenses as it does have superior optics and build quality. So I would say the 100mm macro was best suited for someone just starting out in macro photography or someone that just likes to handhold shots. So this is very easy to handhold shots and it's good for starting out in photography because it has the image stabilization and it has a superior autofocus on it. Fantastic autofocus is gonna get you those shots that are in focus and sharp. The other thing with this is that it is very versatile. So it can go from just a standard macro lens to portraits. So it gives you more choice with the lens. So if you did pick it up as a beginner, you weren't that interested in macro, you can still use the lens for other things. So I'm not saying that the 100 mil macro is just for beginner photographers and the 65 is for more professionals. Obviously it depends on your style and how you feel. But I would, I would suggest if you were looking for a lens and you were just starting out, the 100 mil macro, is probably the better one if you're not sure on macro photography. So if you're not 100% sure that you wanna carry on doing it, this is the better lens because it's more versatile so you can get more out of it. But it's a little bit more forgiving when you're actually shooting things that in macro. Handheld, for example, it's image stabilized and it's got the uh, autofocus, which will help you get those better shots. So it's a little bit more forgiving and it's a bit more um, easier to use in the sense that there's not a big learning curve in using it. Whereas the 65 mil is, it's almost like the deep end of macro photography straight away. You'd need a tripod, you need a flash, you need to know your focusing distance because you're doing manual focus. And all those little things that come into play once you've been doing photography for a little bit longer, really, you really do need that in with using the 65 mil macro. And that's not saying a beginner couldn't use the 65 mil, it's just a little bit more of a learning curve. So it's a little less stressful using the 100 mil than it is the 65 if it's 100% something you want to go to then obviously that's a good lens to pick straight out because it saves you wasting money on uh, 100 mil macro and then upgrading to the 65 mil but if you know you're definitely going to use it but so maybe borrow somebody else's rent a lens from someone and just play about with which ones you like best but that, that's my suggestions hopefully you enjoyed this video and you get something out of it and you get the right lens for you um, it just leaves me to say thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one